Okay, here we are on the 24th of the month. Torah brings refua to all living things. That's an English translation of the Maimur Ghazal. So who are those who need refua? Baruch Benyamin ben Rachel Blima, Yehudas Golda Basiliza Hono, Haim Yaakov Zev ben Sara, Yosef Yitzhak ben Lior, and Shoshana Bas Hana. Before Shlema Bakar. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Yedvor Rachel Bat Miriam Chava, Rivka Bat Sali Sila, Natan Yosef ben Olga Sara, Roy Rafael ben Nofra, Isabor ben Mary Asha. Before Shlema Bakarev. Amen. Amen, amen. And Rav Yitzhak Ginsburg, Yitzhak Fibish Ben Brian Amalk. Yitzhak Fibish Ben Brian Amalk. Okay. Okay. Uh, Hayom Yom. Yeah. Hayom Yom today, Wednesday. The 24th of Menachem a tradition handed down from Rabbi to Rabbi as follows. During the well-known conflict between Hasidim and their opponents, the Hasidim told the Alter Rabbi about the terrible abuse which they suffered from the plain, unlettered, misnagis folk, the simple, very religious Jews. The misnagdim, we call them. Why the misnagdim? Because they're against Hasidists. The Rebbe said, grandfather, the Rebbe called the Baal Shem Tov his grandfather, the Baal Shem Tov really loved, deeply loved simple folk. And these are the simple folk, the simple misnagdim. In my first days in Mezrich, the Rebbe, the Magid, said, it was a frequent customary remark of the Rebbe, the Baal Shem Tov, that Avis Yisrael, love of Israel is love of God. You are children of Hashem, your God. When one loves the father, one loves the children. In other words, break through and see the kernel of godliness in even those misnagdim and love them. That's how you know. It's pretty applicable to our everyday life, plenty of opportunities for breaking through the superficial that people oppose us with or get on our nerves with, etc., etc., and look at the core. Okay, uh, yeah, where are we? Okay, lessons in Tanya. Today we are starting on page one twenty six, two lines down, twenty four of Vahine. And in Hayenu, Wednesdays is on page 92, bottom of page 92. And in Lakuti Amorim, excuse me, Lakuti Amorim, right here, it's on the, uh, it's on the top of page 222, 222. Or just uh, briefly, we're explaining the Pasuk, Ashrenu Matev Chalkeinu. How happy and good, how good is our portion? And the author of his question here is, what's the difference between Chelkeinu and Goyrelenu? Our portion and our Goyrel. Goyrel really means a lottery. So what's the difference between what's apportioned to us in general, meaning how does proportionality and multiplicity work? Chalkenu, chalakim, biting things into parts. And then how is it that we get something which is specifically designed for us at the same time, like a lottery? You win the lottery. Some one person wins the lottery. So he's explaining this, and he's explaining, at large, mostly, mostly what he's explaining, and will explain to the end of this piece, is the union of chalkenu. All of creation appears in a manner of chalakim, Four worlds, right? Not one, four worlds. 613 mitzvahs, 613 body parts, right? And all of that comes from 
the one who is everything and indivisible through the process of what we call Simpson, Simpson the Hispastus. And that's what he's been writing about and explaining about yesterday. So a ha'ora, a ray from God himself comes into his name. His name is now four, yud ke vav ke, And that divides further and further. And each division produces a certain amount of concealment. And the amount of concealment has to do with the uh, uh, emergence of an infinite number of individual multiplicities. That's what we've got so far. Okay, top of the page, 222. Two, two. So behold, take a look. Aura zu, this aura, this radiation, this illumination of light, which comes from the Ein Sof, and then uh, through the process of Tsimsum, evolves into many different sublights, so to speak. Even though above, meaning before it comes into specificity, it shines in a way that is in a manner of without any limitation, bleakable, the talkless, and no boundary and no end. And it does that, and this uh, initial sense of emanation, sometimes it's referred to as when God emanates to himself, or the language that you see in consider like shider la'atzma, he measures out to himself. In other words, if we put a, a physical module on this, he's in the planning stage, right? The multiplicity is taking form, but it's taking form inside the person before, in a, in a manner of planning, what's going to become actualized. And so, from his infinite, undifferentiated allness, allness begins a process of differentiation, to bring to into being, into life, concealed worlds. And these worlds are without number. This is numberlessness brought into numberedness. Infinity brought into finitude. And originally, it starts in a singularity, which is infinite. And that singularity we've learned before, it's called soivikolami, it penetrates everything. And then it becomes manifest that from that source of infinite into an infinite number of finite things called worlds and midos and all the other things. Midos meaning, of course, measure time and place, measurements and time, measurements and place. Worlds without end. Without any end, without any limit to them. Mashikasabi, the Rabbah is written in the section of the Zohar called Idur Rabbah. Nevertheless, as this light comes down below, through many contractions, diminutions, concealments, in order to bring to into life particular nevroyim. Now he's looking at the three worlds. Bria, nevroyim, created beings. Yehayasurim, the world of Yetzira, formed beings. Menasim, actually made beings. These three worlds below Atzilus. Bria, Yetzira, and Asiya. So as that happens, this light, this ha'ora, in a chalekes that a cloud, it's it's divided, and that word chalek is the first part of our pasuk. Ashrenu matev chalkenu, how great is your are your portions? So this chalkenu is referring to the portions of when with all of creation is come through a chalek eleka. Even our anybody our neshama, our manifest level of neshama is a chalek eleka even though the essence of our neshama, of course, is united with God himself. But this process of Simpson brings chalakim. It brings nevroyim, gerudim, v'chitsurim, v'nasim, with well, all in nechelekes, which are divided, they're a klal in general, lemisper tariyat, to the number of 613. 613, 13 general parts of the body, 613 general parts of the body of Creation. And these 613 are connected tadi ag mitzvahs. And so each one of the mitzvahs 
is an embodiment of the energy of the 613 uh, particularities of all worlds. That's uh, something to ponder. 613, 613. Tadi Agnisvis of the Torah. Jehain Hain, Tadi, as he says, not pretty, out loud. Jehain Hain, these 613 mitzvahs, right? Mitzvah Melosh and Safta Vahibur, remember, connecting. These 613 mitzvahs are 613 miniham shochas ha'ora, 613 kinds of drawings down of ha'ora zu, of this radiation, me'or en so barachu, from the infinite light, which is the, the infinity of the light of the en so barachu, the infinite one, blessed be he, lehor l'nishmas odom, l'nishmas odom, in order to radiate to the souls of a person. The 613 effusions are embedded in our 613 body parts, which are the kinds of the numerical value of the construct of the neshama, which enliven us. Akalula as he says, the 613, to, well, to, to let's go back, to the, there's a light, to illuminate the nishmas adam, the souls of an adam. Which includes that souls of a person include in their soulful manifestation before they manifest physically the 613 limbs, the shisha and, this, and the, uh, the uh, 248 limbs and the fixed 365 gidim. Which is all for the sake of man's soul. So the soul is a singular entity, but containing with it. 613 effusions or branches or powers. Powers is probably the best word because that's the word that's usually used. In order that this soul should be able to do what is for his sake, which is sake, what's its mission, which is to activate the body to do the mitzvahs. And this describes the root and the purpose of the descent. Of the of the this, of the drawing down of this aura, this radiation, lamata down below, to all the created beings, uh, and again again the three worlds the, and, the, and the formed ones, the etzurim and the nasim, shetachlis kulam, which the end, the whole purpose of this, is what he's now describing very generally, this three tiered descent, is a adam, is the adam down here below who is built with 613 effusions of God and three, which are, which are effectively 613 mitzvahs, in other words, 613 abilities, pathways, uh, facets to connect with Hashem. Benoida as is known. The Hine this number, 613, will be there a cloud, the general number. Specifically, he called mitzvah to mitzvah, each and every mitzvah, mishalekes lifratim rabin, is our word again, chelek, right? Chelek. Every, all the 613, each one of them can be subdivided. You know, we have mitzvahs of, of Shabbos, a particular number of mitzvahs, but all of them are subdivided in all of the details of how they're performed. And they, from the 613 general, from the infinite explications, infinite meaning infinite in number, no end to it, and going on from generation to generation continually, the continual exposition and bringing forth of new facets in the six hundred in each of the six hundred and thirteen general mitzvahs, by by explicating and bringing forth. Sometimes it's just a matter of an application of that mitzvah in a new time, like fire and electricity. You know, that there's a whole discussion whether whether they're really can you put the the mitzvah of lo sevaro eish you shouldn't burn a fire is that connected with is that electricity an example of that so the, all of this has to be explicated and made clear over time so the six hundred and three are divided le pratim rabim to many many details the ain kates without any end of talkless and no limit to them ain ain gufi halof is pratius and these infinite myriad details in halacha are uh, the 
the, the body of the, all the specific mitzvahs. Shebechol mitzvah she'en lehem misper. That shebechol mitzvah. Yeah, excuse me. These are the embodiments, the detailed embodiments of call of all mitzvahs. She'en lehem misper. There's no limit to the details and explications and applications of these mitzvahs. Mishikosev has written a pasuk in Shir Hashir, Shishim Hema Malchus. It says, 60 are the queen. Now, the queen is a head, right? This is the, and there are 60 heads, and we're going to see that's, that's the queen, that's the majesty, but majesty rolls out with very specific edicts, right? So, Shishim Hema Malchus, 16 are the queen, and he says, not he says, uh, the oral Torah says, what does Shalom HaMelech mean by that? 60 are the queens. And these are the Sama, the 60 Mesectors, the 60 Mesectors of the Oral Torah. And then Shira Shiram goes on and says, Valomis and Misper, and maidens, you have a queen, and now maidens without any number. And so the Oral Torah goes on and says, what is that? What are the maidens? Aim HaHalachas. These are the Halachas. So from the 60 derive an infinite number of offshoots. Shehein hamshoch is ratzuna elyon. All of them, whether you're talking 60 or the innumerable offshoots, they all originate in God's supernal will. Shehein hu mamish bin shamas adam, bin ishmas adam, also in the souls of the person. Kihine kol ha neshamas sheba'odlam, all the souls in the world, which will ever be, hoye kalula me'adam harisha, all the souls of the world of, of of humans, which will ever be in the world, all were included in the soul of Adam Arisha. Vedera Klal, and in general, and in general, you know, his soul, like all souls, are infinite, but they have we can divide them into big chunks of categories. And in general, those categories are 613. Which again give rise to the Meraki Ramachi Bodim and the Shusagidim. Aderak Plat, until you get very specific, Nechlechas Linitsutsois Ein Misper, so that these general, the 613 general rays get subdivided into sparks, which don't have any number at all, beyond number. Shehe Nishmas Kol Yisrael, which are the souls of all the Jewish people, Ein Misper. A, a people that has no end, no number to them. And they all are sparks, offshoots, shootings off, right, from the original 613, which are offshoots themselves of the original supernal will. And this goes on, this devolution, this enumeration, this expansion goes on. From the Yemesa Avos, from the days of the Avos, the Hashvotim, and the tribes, Adbias HaMashiach, until the coming of Mashiach, the Ad Baklal, including the time of Mashiach, Shiakuyim, which will be fulfilled then, Oz Mashiach as is written, Bahoya Mispe Bene Israel Kachoyel Hayam, that the number of the children of Israel will be like the sands of the sea, which is explicated a lot in Hasidus. What's, what's the, that muscle? Every beach, is full of grains of sand. So in that respect, there's a huge amount of singular things. However, they're uncountable. You can't count the number of grains or the stars in the sky, but grains of the sand, because you touch it, you can see that it's particularized, particleized, right? There are particles there, but they're uncountable. So similarly, the number of the children of Israel will be, will be like the sands of the sea, Ashalei yamod, which can't be measured, v'lei yisaper or yispar, and cannot be counted meroiv because of the an infinite multiplicity of them. That's today's time. Questions, comments. So what's so in, one sentence? If, if I we was going to say, in, in sum, in sum, it's funny, I'm just about to say that. In sum, 
all of creation and souls, which are, of course, part of instantiated godliness, right? We'll call both worlds and souls instantiated godliness. All souls are number one, the number of them, and the number of worlds. We always talk about four worlds, but there are all souls and worlds are numberless. There are so many of them that are uncountable, right? So many chalakim, so many pieces that they're uncountable. And yet at the same time, they all carry with them a singular point of origin, which is Hashem Echad. That's the point describing chalakim, that the, the Allah, I went to the Pasuk, how happy and good is our chalik. Why is our chalik? Why is our portion so good? Because of the fact that we realize, or should realize, he's telling us, and it's for us to realize, that though your portion and your life, and I'm speaking to each of us, is different from each and every one of the other people in this call's life, it has a singularity that, that makes us all bound together, like the Misnagdim, who differed and went in all different ways, the al Rabbi says, wait, we all have a singularity which makes us one, and that oneness has to shine through the infinite diversity. Or in other simple words, this is an explication of, of how the infinite gets manifest in the finite, or how the finite contains the infinite. It's a sum. And in the, in the finite, the multiplicity is called halakim. Okay? So when we say Hashem is not divided into pieces, right. but still, but. but there's a but. There's a but. Not but divided. that but, yeah, but the but doesn't apply to him himself. The but applies to the auras, the radiation, the or, the or is subdivided. The or in sof is subdivided. The ain sof himself is not subdivided. Can never be subdivided. Chalik, that's our word. Only a piece. A particular ray of, of godly illumination. Mm -hmm. A chalik. Part of God, our souls, Halak Alakamimam, part, a particular illumination. Can we say that we are part God? Well, we've had this before. We are godly. We've discussed this way back when. No, I know, but with the with the word part, like part human, because God doesn't have a body, right? It's it's one of the thirteen principles of faith right. that God has no body. But we do have bodies, so it's weird to think that we have something Hashem doesn't have. Well, why don't we just use the language Helek Elaka? That's what the Torah teaches us, right? A part of, remember, Elaka refers to contraction, Gevorah. We're part of the godliness as the godliness manifests itself in contraction. That's Otherwise, there could not be multiple souls. Multiplicity is a function of Tzimtzum. And Simpson is a godly talent. So we are all participating and part of and and a result of that godly talent, which is called Elaka or Simpson or Gavur. Yes, yes. But in English mm. we're adding we're adding the words of between Chelek and Eloka. In Hebrew it's just Chelek Eloka. Yeah, a part of God. Yeah, right. Part God. Yes. A part yeah. of God. A part of the God, which is called mm. Elaka. The, the Simpson. We're part of, we are a result of the of, the, of God's ability to uh, his talent, his whatever you want to call it, to to Mitzamsum himself. I have That's another kind of uh, yeah. I have another kind of ask a uh, perspective there, is that if Adam contained all of the souls. Mm -hmm. That mean I wonder if that means that as the generations have gone down, uh, we are sort of diluted versions 
of diluted, the original. Diluted, yeah. diluted. Well, there, there's, there's two things there. You're onto something very important. Two things there. Of course, we're diluted diversions, diluted in the sense that the Timsum is very great, right? Adam Arishan originally, his Timsum was only to the extent that it allowed him to have a, an existence, right? But it didn't conceal the God, the Orient Sov. The Orient Sov illuminated the garden. Uh, after the Chet Ezadas, there became a metaphorical darkness, and things are different. So the Nitzoytzes that we have, that we live with, are, have a different quality. The sparks that we live with have a different manifest. This is important. They're all from the Edsum, right? All from, but different manifest quality than the soul of Adam Arishan. Now, initially, Adam Arishan is the second point that I want to bring out. Adam Harishon is the progenitor of all human beings. So all human beings uh, had that illumination. I mean, and, and then it, you know, not it didn't stay in the world very long until the the Chete Sedas, but all human beings inherited that diluted or darkened version, uh, even Adam Arishan. The light was hidden from him. And then as the generations went on, let's use the word netsoitsois, let's use this word here, sparks, right? So as the thing, as the, as the worlds went, as the humanity went on from generation to generation, large groups of people wandered totally away from the, the ways of God. And the result of that, or it's not sure it was cause or effect, but certainly the effect of that was that, and it's explained in Hosidus, the the, the sparks became further diluted, or uh, Moshe Ganut calls them fragmented. The sparks became more fragmented. And from there you have a di big division between the Shomis Yisrael, which continued in the ways of God, and had, yes, diminution and fragmentation versus other Marishan, but incomparable to this, the fragmentation and the diminution that goes on in the person, in the in the. In the in the in us to whole nations and tribes which didn't serve God, which gave rise to the difference between uh, the, 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 the neshama of the non-Jews and the neshama of the Jews. Mm, okay. Uh, Thank so, you. Yeah, yeah. But it all starts, and it all goes back to the one. That's why, you know, all of humanity will come back, right? The, the non-Jews will become either observant of the ger tashu, which would mean they they would perform, they will uh, come back to the shavu mitzvahs b'nei adam with all their ramifications, or they will become gerim amish, and everything will go back to the way it was. That all the nations will be in gathered. Right, that's the promise in the prophets. All humanity will be gathered in back to the state that existed before when we all had what we call a, a Jewish soul, a soul that wasn't uh, so fragmented. Yeah. All right. I hope that helped. Did that help you, Hello, Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Okay. Uh, yeah, thank you. Anybody else? Come in. Okay. Ubechain, therefore, having said all this, so what? Hmm. Hmm. Anybody? Well, these 613 mitzvahs, um, we have to take them a little more seriously. <laughs> <laughs> I love that, right. Well, yeah, because, because listen, very simply, the 613 mitzvahs are God's will, and God's will, his rutzen, is the creative force of everything, right? So these mitzvahs are the source, of, really the source of our particularly Jewish state of being. And that's a big deal. We have a lot of power. I mean, that's kind of trivial to say that. But we also have a lot to give, to give the world the understanding of how things really are. And we're all made in the image of God. And with that comes a responsibility to organize our cultures and our society and our cities and ourselves according to that pattern. That would be a wonderful thing. That would be Gaula. Yeah. Just 
clarify something, please? Yes. Um, so just, just taking a little issue with saying the myths was other source of our power, really they're the manifestation of our power because the source is Hashem. the and the light. Yes? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Came home. <laughs> what? She came home. <laughs> she came home. Okay. Yeah. I've been in Eretz Yisrael for three and a half weeks, Baruch Hashem. And I do have to say, like, the feeling of being closer to the source, the light, the healing, and everything, yeah. it's just really um, profound there, without it's working good. very hard at it, just being there. So I'm great. Come back soon. Baruch Hashem. Yeah. We're yeah. all coming. We're all coming back soon, for sure. Yeah. yeah. Sounds good. Sounds good. Let's see it. See it. Um, Why don't you start, Pastor Rivka, Start it, building the annex to your house now. It's. I've got plenty of room. <laughs> I got okay. plenty of room. Uh, okay. okay. Coming. I'm coming. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you all. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. yeah. See you tomorrow. Yemir Sashem. Okay. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.